with a melody you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemy till all my fears are gone let me hear you sing this I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God chosen me love has called my name I've been born again into your family oh your blood flows through my veins I'm no longer a slave to fear no I'm not I gave
I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I count on one thing The same God never failed Will not fail me now You won't fail me now In the waiting The same God who's never late Is working all things out Come on, working all things out Let's sing it out Say yes, I will you high in the lowest valley, yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will see for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Oh, yes, I will. Hey. same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God that never laid is working all things out. He's working all things out. Oh, yes, I will get to your heart. Yes, I will, God. I will praise you, Lord. I choose to praise you, God. Let's just sing this. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise his name forevermore, forevermore. Time. 
our living hope. Amen. That's who we're singing to. That's who we're praising right now. Lift your voices and let's worship him. Let's open our hearts. Let's just look at our father for who he is and what he does. We're his children. How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living home. Who could imagine? So great a mercy, what heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross is spoken, I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me His own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Sing it out. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. On me, you have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Till his lost his grip on me, you have broken. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. I love this verse. Then came the morning that sealed the promise, buried body begin to breathe out of the silence yes the roaring lion you gotta declare his grave Let's sing that again then came the morning come on that sealed the promise you buried by
Hey everyone, welcome to Kesed Church. We're so glad you joined us today. My name's Alyssa and this is your Kesed News. Here at Kesed, we are a community that believes we are better together than we are apart. If you're a new guest with us at either our Kesed Uptown or Columbia campus, we'd love for you to visit the Welcome Center in the lobby after service to fill out a Hello Kesed card and receive a free gift. We would love to be praying for you throughout the week. You can let us know how by stopping by the Welcome Center after service to fill out a Hello Kesed card. Or you can call the church office or submit one anytime at kesed.com slash prayer. With all that's been happening here at Kesed, we wanted to quickly revisit all the gatherings and services that we are now offering every week. Don't forget that in addition to our normal Sunday services at both campuses and our Thursday evening service at Uptown, our Celebrate Recovery service is available Monday nights and Kesed Student Ministries is every Wednesday night at our Uptown campus. We're doing our best to offer a variety of times to ensure that everyone can attend. And remember to give us a weekly heads up of which service you're planning to attend on our app or on our website. Make sure you don't miss out on the ways we have for you to get connected here at Kesed. For those new to Kesed at either Kesed Columbia or Kesed Online, we still have our Hello Kesed class available that we hope you'll join us for. And for those looking to grow in their faith, we still have a few spots available in our group study through the book, You Are Never Alone. You can register for any of these courses by visiting the Welcome Center after service at either campus, checking out our church app, or visiting our website at kesed.com slash events. Make sure to check out your Kesed church app for more information about these and other events. You can also stay up to date with everything going on here at Kesed by visiting our website, following our Facebook page, or visiting the Welcome Center on Thursday or Sundays. And if you have any questions, you can always contact us at info at kesedchurch.com. All right, everyone, that's all we have for announcements. So go ahead and stand up, maybe say hi to someone around you, or if you're joining us at Kesed Online, maybe take a minute to refill your coffee, and we'll continue with our service shortly. I give thanks to the Lord, talk on His name, make known His deeds among the peoples, sing to Him, sing praises to Him, Speak that all his wonders, joy and his holy name. The heart of those who seek the Lord be glad. Amen. And be in the God that's me. Good morning. Welcome to Kesed. My name is Danny. If you are new with us, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we are a church that, that loves to... Uh, to spend time talking about God, and we are a safe place for people who are spiritually curious. So if you're on that journey, you have questions, uh, and just uh, just want to spend time kind of in a space where you can dive into some of that, then, then welcome home. Uh, we're in a series right now called God, It's Me, and we're leaning into kind of the restrictions that have caused us to, to have church services with our children in the room. This is something the church has done for many, many, many years, uh, and just until lately, probably the last 60 or 70 years, uh, we started pulling kids out of the room and doing more children-style church, and so it's, it's been kind of a neat reset. Uh, so if you have kids with you, uh, please feel at ease, feel welcome. Uh, we recognize there's going to be uh, goldfish, cracker snacks opening during service, and blankets on the ground and all that stuff, and, and we'll be fine with it. Um, at Kesed, we believe strongly in a diversity of voices, and especially during times like this, it's really important that we hear from more than just a few people, because uh, as lovely as it is to, to share with you as often as I do, I think there's a real benefit to hearing from others as well. And so uh, today you're going to hear from a guest, but not someone from outside, someone from within, and her name is Jen, Jen Adamson, and Jen has been part of my story uh, since we were kids together, and uh, we kind of grew up together, and she went to Bible school and then started speaking, and then started attending Kesed uh, a few years back, and I knew then that we would work her into this space, but it took way, way longer than I thought. I just, I want to be honest. Uh, but Jen is, <laughs> because of our growing up, it's a little bit like having my little sister come and speak, which isn't really the most safe or respectful thing that I could do to myself here in this room. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Jen used my podium, which is built for me last week, and just before I got on stage, she said, do you have anything just a little bit taller for people like normal size? So, so you can see this is Jen's podium, uh, which I could never use because I can't see over it. But uh, she's going to come and share with you guys, and uh, I think it's just, it's just really going to bless you. And so uh, would you please welcome Jen Adamson. Uh, 
Oh, this is so much better already. Look at that. I was like this on Thursday, so. Well, I'm excited to be here. Thursday got my nerves, so you guys get the good stuff. And this is my home service, so I feel like these are my people. Don't tell 11 o'clock. Uh, like Danny said, my name is Jen. I've been attending Kesed for about six years, and I wasn't just like waiting back to not speak. I was having children and, you know, like doing stuff. So uh, I have a husband, Jake, of about eight and a half years, nicest guy on the planet. If you need a friend, he's your guy. Uh, I have three kids, Hunter, Knox, and Tenley. Yeah, well, what you don't see behind this picture is like what it took to get there. And it took a very sweaty mom yelling with a lot of candy bribes. But they are pretty cute. Sometimes I don't even feel old enough to be responsible for three little humans, but Jake and I make it work. So Jake and I both work full time outside of the house. And I work for a family business with my dad and my brother. And I've been doing that for about 11 years. And up until about a year and a half ago, I'd say, we started sharing an office with Kessid. And for some reason, I got shoved in the back to share a wall with Danny. So if you could just keep me on that prayer list, it's real loud back there. When Danny asked me to be a part of this teaching series, I said yes. And um, like a sermon in mind that I would want to talk about. And then he, t- he did that sermon, Taking Moments. If you missed that, go back and listen to it. It was really, really good. And I was telling him how I've been really trying to do that, especially with, you know, the shutdown in the world, more time at home. I wanted to be a little more intentional with my kids. So I was telling him about these grateful journals that I got. And he goes, speak on that. Speak on being grateful. And I was like, okay, thanks for interrupting me, but okay. So I drove home that night from work, and I thought, what have I got myself into? How am I supposed to speak to you guys about being grateful this year? I mean, give me Y2K, give me any other year, but like 2020, like let's be grateful for staying at home all day and teaching our children now. And I mean, I I wanna stand up here and be authentic with you guys, but it was really hard for me in that moment to think about what I'm supposed to share with you to be grateful for in a year like 2020. So I prayed and I prayed a lot. (laughs) And I asked God what he'd wanna say And what I felt like he was speaking to me was, if we could learn to be grateful in a year like 2020, it'll change the rest of our years. Choosing this posture of gratitude in a year like 2020 isn't easy, but I really feel like it could impact the rest of our lives. Jake and I have had a few of those broken years outside of 2020 specifically with my son, Knox. Knox is a middle kid. He, uh, God spent extra time on those middle kids. Knox is adventurous and strong-willed and stubborn, just like his father. Just kidding, that's all me. And uh, I'm reaping what's out. So uh, Knox, at about four months, started having some breathing troubles. Are you guys okay if I'm a little vulnerable with you this morning? I'm gonna share Knox's story with his permission. Um, he had some trouble at four months. We kind of bypassed that. A year into his life, he started having more. And Jake and I had to start playing detective to figure out what was causing all these asthma attacks. And so we were tracking his food and tracking, you know, his environment and trying to figure out what was causing him to land at Randall's, like felt like every month. And so what we realized was that every cold symptom that he had would just spiral really quick and get him admitted to Randall's. And so we started noticing, like he would blow his nose or cough, we would pack our bag and we would be at Randall's within 45 minutes. It just was that crazy. And so by the end of 2019, there were a lot of ambulance rides that I tried to make fun and a lot of hospital admissions, and he had five different specialists involved in his health. So we were really at the end of our ropes because he was on a high-dose steroid for about three years straight. He had a rescue inhalers. He had this oral steroid that I'm pretty sure they don't just hand out, but I felt like they were for us to keep us out of the hospital. 
And as a mom, I really struggled with giving him that because he was already just jacked up on steroids like all the time. And so come to the end of last year, I threw my back out because I'm old. And I landed myself in the chiropractor for the first time. And I don't know why, but I just have this real big fear of them. I don't, they shouldn't be cracking things. And so I'm doing my therapy, and there's these like screens that talk about like why you should come back and why it's good and tell a friend. And so one of them was talking about how if your body's out of alignment, it could cause disruption in your breathing. So I was like, hey, I have a kid who can't breathe, so let's bring him in. Again, we were trying anything. Like anyone recommended something, we were going to try it. It wasn't going to be for lack of effort. So we bring Knox into the chiropractor in the beginning of January of this year. And by the end of March, in the middle of a respiratory pandemic, Knox has weaned off all of his medication, he hasn't had a symptom since, and he's like a new kid. Yeah, and that... <laughs> and that also is a big thing to my mom putting him on the prayer list every single time he had an issue, and your guys' prayers, we felt them every every hospital stay, so thank you. What we learned about that, for our son, I'm not a doctor, is that Knox's body was out of alignment. And some of like, the side effects of having your body be out of alignment, the obvious chronic headaches, back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain, frequent illnesses, but it also impacts your nervous system. And so if your body's out of alignment, it can like crush your breathing almost. And so we took him in and Obviously, it worked, because that's the only thing that we changed. And here's what I feel like God is relating that to for us today spiritually. If we could learn this posture of gratitude, if we could put our body back into alignment the way that God is calling us to, and realign ourselves with his peace, his promises, his word, then those side effects that we feel, especially in a year like 2020, anxiety, anger, bitterness, resentment, it would put your body back into balance. James 1, 2 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind. And if you take that considerate word back to the root, it means to lead the way. And I really think that that's what God is calling us as a church to do, to lead the way in this posture of gratitude. When COVID hit, I gotta be honest, I'm, I'm laying all my cards out. I'm a hypochondriac. Anyone else in the room? Okay, just me, thank you. Could have used a sympathy hand, but whatever. Maybe I'll switch to the 11. Um, just kidding. So when all of the other symptoms of COVID left me and all that sat was this huge weight, I recognized its name wasn't COVID, but anxiety. You see, with Knox's journey, I know what anxiety looks like. Every runny nose, every cough, I would automatically think, how am I going to get my work done tomorrow? How how am I going to uh, be there for Knox, be there for myself, and have this anxiety of the fear of the unknown? Because every hospital stay seemed to be different. And when all of that got too much to deal with, I pleaded to God just to take it away, because it was like I couldn't breathe. And he did. You see, anxiety was throwing off my alignment, and I wasn't very good at balancing everything else in my life. As moms, we try to do it all. And what I learned throughout this year is how grateful I really am when anxiety shows up in my life. Because it's a conversation I get to have with God about, okay, my trust was in myself and my ability and not in yours. And so would you take it? Would you realign me? And would I stand on your promises? So when anxiety pops up, where's my trust? Anxiety, where's my trust? Grace P. Cho says that gratitude changes our posture. And practicing gratitude means we must slow down our minds and our hearts to remember, recount, and recognize what we have to be grateful for. It helps us to make mental and emotional shifts throughout the day when it's not going well, and it grounds us and gives us a better perspective. Gratitude is a mental shift. It's a choice. It's a heart and a mind issue. And sometimes it takes a lot of effort, but what you gain is so much more. Amy Warren, a psychotherapist and best-selling author, says that there's these benefits of gratitude. It opens the door to more relationships. It improves physical health, 
psychological health, enhances empathy and reduces aggression, it improves self-esteem, oh, and you sleep better, how could I forget that? That alone will make me be more grateful. It improves self-esteem, and the last one, increases mental strength. And I wonder, what are some situations in your life where, looking back, your posture could have been different? Maybe some of your side effects didn't actually have to be there. You see, we can have this posture of gratitude, but if we never actually take the time to be grateful, we're going to miss all of those benefits. We could look the part, but we got to act it out. And so we see this taking the time for all throughout Scripture. We see it in the book of Daniel, where he's pleading to God to reveal King Nebuchadnezzar's dream to essentially spare his life, and he does. And instead of Daniel running to Nebuchadnezzar, saving his life and revealing, fact-checking his dream, he stops and takes a moment and is grateful to God for doing that. We see it with Jesus in the Last Supper, even though he knew what awaited him. And we see it here in the book of Luke, chapter 17, with the ten lepers. Lepers back in the day, let's see if any of this sounds familiar to you today. Lepers back in the day were highly contagious. They would quarantine together if they had it because they were cut off from normal life and they had to socially distance, maybe six feet. Sound familiar to anyone, maybe? Well, let's pick up the story in Luke chapter 17, verse 11. While traveling to Jerusalem, Jesus passed between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, 10 men with leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he told them, go and show yourselves to the priest. See, back in the day, they had to be announced clean before they could enter back into society. So that was super important. And while they were going, it says they were cleansed. You know, as I was thinking about this last night and kind of just going over my notes, I realized the faith that it takes to walk away. They weren't cleansed when they were walking. They were cleansed as they went to the priest. Could you imagine their eagerness to hurry back home? I mean, some of these people had been years that they'd been shut off from their family, haven't hugged or kissed their kids, their wives, gone back into normal life. I'm sure they were super eager to, like, announce me clean. I'm sure they were sprinting. Verse 15 says, But one of them, seeing that he was healed, returned, and with a loud voice, I'm trying to read both. I messed myself up. And with a loud voice, gave glory to God. He fell face down at his feet, thanking him, and he was a Samaritan. You see, one returns with this posture of gratitude, taking time, as eager as the rest, I'm sure, and with the same volume and passion he had to be clean, gave gratitude. And I wonder if the ones running to the priest even knew they were clean. You see, this one, it says, about one of them returned, seeing that he was clean. He saw the miracle, he turned around, and he gave gratitude to God. And it says in verse 17, Then Jesus said, We're not ten cleansed, where are the nine? Didn't any return to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he told him, Get up and go on your way, your faith has saved you. When we receive a miracle, a blessing, favor, an answer from God, are we like the nine, or are we like the one who takes the time to show gratitude? You know, I realized in preparing this message that I never really took the time to be grateful for what God has done in my life, especially this year, especially with my son Knox, especially in the middle of a pandemic, especially with all the wildfires and the hazardous air. I mean, he should be in and out of the hospital this year, but instead he's been the healthiest he's ever been, and I haven't even had to worry about it. I keep trying just to, like, push through and get to the next that sometimes I push through my miracles, and I push through my answers, and I realize I never really stop and give gratitude to God. Not only for the health part of my son, but for the parenting part. If you know me and you know my son, it's been a challenge. He's almost five, and he is like no one else. He uh, just is adventurous. He just 
strong-willed. He just doesn't listen sometimes. And that on steroids, whoo, it's been, it's been something. And uh, with the shutdown of the world and with us being able to not have to focus on all of his doctor's appointments, we've been able to come together and figure out how to parent him the way that he needs and the way that he responds best to. And I'm so grateful for that. I'm choosing to turn around. The thing about gratitude is that it doesn't expire. It's never not any good anymore. And so maybe time has passed, nine months, but I'm choosing to turn around and be grateful for what God has done. I don't know what 2020 has looked like for you. In your marriage, in your homes, in your parenting, but I wonder if there's moments, especially in the last year, that maybe you too have missed being grateful for. 2020's motto for me quickly changed in about March to I'm just going to roll with it. Homeschool? Yes. Spending all day at home with my husband working and parenting three kids? Sign me up. No toilet paper? Sure, we'll make it work. But what's my heart look like when my plans are not God's plans and he doesn't answer me the way that I think is best? You see, I wanted all this extra time with my kids just not teaching them too. I wanted extra time with my husband, not working together. There's a reason we don't work together. He'd, one, take my job because he's so smart. How does my posture change in those moments? Would I still feel time to be grateful? What does my heart look like in those moments? There's a story in the book of Daniel about this heart of gratitude that I believe God wants to produce in us about these three wise guys. Maybe you know them. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I told Thursday night, I wish I had the felt board. Anyone remember the felt board? Those were good, right? Those were good. I almost brought it today just as a little treat for the nine o'clock. I don't even know if they make them. But they show us a really great example of what the heart of gratitude looks like when our plans are not God's plans. King Nebuchadnezzar, let's get the back up a little bit. King Nebuchadnezzar builds a statue and orders all of the land to bow and worship it when they hear the music. There were a group of locals, let's call them Karens, and they knew that nobody was monitoring who was bowing and who wasn't. And so being jealous of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they told the king, hey, those three Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they aren't bowing when they hear the music. You see, the world is watching our posture, especially in a year like 2020. Will we bow just to be like everybody else and just get through it? Or will we stand firm knowing that we serve a God who is above everything that this year has to offer? So the locals, they tell King Nebuchadnezzar, and he calls them forth. And that's where we pick up our story. In Daniel 3, verse 13. Then in a furious rage, Nebuchadnezzar gave orders to bring in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king. Nebuchadnezzar asked them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, is it true that you don't serve my gods or worship the gold statue I have set up? Now, if you're ready, as if they had made a mistake before, when you hear the music, the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, drum, and every kind of music, fall down and worship the gold statue. But if you don't worship it, you will immediately be thrown in the furnace of blazing fire. And who is the God who can rescue you from my power? And here, here's what I think God is calling us to have this heart of gratitude. Here's what it looks like. In verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to give you an answer to the question. If the God we serve exists, then he can rescue us from the furnace of blazing fire, and he can rescue us from the power of you, the king. And here, here's the money verse. (laughs) But even if he doesn't, even if he doesn't rescue us, we want you to know that we still won't bow, serve your gods, or worship the gold statue you set up. You see, that's the heart of gratitude. It's in our posture. It's in our reflection. It's in the even if he doesn't. If the only thing God ever did was send his son to die on the cross for your sins, would that be enough? If God never did a single thing for me, never answered another prayer, would I still be grateful? The story goes on to say that they tie the three up, crank the furnace 
seven times hotter and pushed them in. And the Bible says that even the men that pushed them in didn't survive. And in verse 24, the king Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in an alarm. He said to his advisors, didn't we throw three men bound into the fire? Yes, of course, your majesty, they replied to the king. He exclaimed, look, I see four men, not tied, walking around in the fire, unharmed. And the fourth looks like the son of God. You see, God could have just rescued him. Nebuchadnezzar could have seen three men and still been alarmed. But that's the God that we serve. He doesn't just rescue us, he goes in it with us. King Nebuchadnezzar calls them out, seeing that not even a hair on their head was singed, and praises the one true God. After that, King Nebuchadnezzar gives them a promotion, and I'm sure they wanted that, but I'm sure that wasn't the path they were asking God to take them through, just like me with the extra time that I wanted. When we allow God to adjust our posture, take time to reflect on what we are to be grateful for, and dive into that heart of gratitude, we reap the benefits of gratitude in a time of chaos. When we truly take time to reflect, we're able to see that we were never alone in our fires, and that if we align ourselves to God's promises, a heart of gratitude will be produced in us that doesn't change with the wind, with the elections, or with the sickness of a child. I was reminded in preparing this message that when I was pregnant with Knox at my dating ultrasound, I went in and what was supposed to be there wasn't there. And so my doctor prepared me to come back the next week to check again, but to be prepared for the worst. I think she actually told me to pack a bag and that I would probably be heading to the hospital after that. I had normal pregnancy with my first, and so I was really, really shocked. I remember going home that night being so heartbroken and trying to hold it together for my husband and for my son. You see, our posture as moms reflects on those around us. If I'm scared, my son's scared. If I'm sad, my son's sad. And so I really felt like I had to hold it, hold it together. But when they all fell asleep, I remember crying the ugliest cry that I could ever cry, because I am not a pretty crier, for God to change my outcome, to change my story, to change the doctor, what they see. But I remember sitting there thinking, but God, even if you don't, even if the answer doesn't change, I will still serve you, I will still love you, I will still praise you. How could I not? And obviously, the outcome was different. Knox is here with us, and that was his cute little voice on the God, It's Me video. I love that. I can keep that forever. His little voice is so cute. But that heart of gratitude that was produced in me in that dark moment, I now see brought me through all of those ER visits, all of those ambulance rides, all of those ICU stents, all of those times where I sat in a room where doctors had to tell me to make a choice about my son's well-being. And I'm so grateful for that. Because even though I prayed like only a mom can pray, or a grandma, oh, you grandmas, brought me through a lot. I knew that God would never leave me, and I wasn't alone in my fire. So we adjust our posture. We ask God to produce a heart of gratitude, and we reflect. 2020 has left me feeling so grateful for a redo restructuring and relinquishing the fact that I was never really in control in the first place, reprioritizing things that matter, and aligning myself to a posture of gratitude. I made a choice to change my posture this year, especially with my kids. Here's how my family put into action what we talked about today. Bedtime for us is crazy. We call it the witching hour, dinner time to bedtime. I don't know what happens to them. Like, from 5 o'clock to 7, it's nuts in our house. And my try not to yell really is, whew, that time is just, it's a two-hour block where I'm like, okay, God, you got to be here because I'm going to yell at them all the time. And so I really wanted to be more intentional. I wanted to focus on things that they really enjoy. My son loves gaming, and I just, I don't get it. I guess now you can go to college for that. So there's hope, I guess. 
And so I'm trying to get on the floor and play Barbies with my daughter, and one of the, time, the areas of opportunity for me and my husband was bedtime. We would count down the clock till 7 and be like, all right, let's go, go to sleep. And then we would be mad when they didn't. So instead, we decided to buy these grateful journals. They look like this. And it said a three-minute journal, and I was like, yes, I can do that. So with Knox's permission, he said I could share some of his journals. So one of them, so the top is three things you're thankful for. That day, his room, his blanket, okay, my kid's four, so, and playing with a Nerf gun. Person who brought me joy today, that day was the Amazon delivery guy, I can relate. And then you get to choose how you really felt throughout the day. And for some reason, he felt mad. But this right here, this is why we do this journal. Because even though he had a bad day that day, there's still things that he can be grateful for. And at the end, it says, what was the best part about your day? Draw or write about it. For him, the Amazon delivery guy, some waiters, because hunting season is upon us. So, and then another one. That day, I brought him joy, or I'm thank he was thankful for me, uh, his family, heaven, and God. The person that brought him joy that day was Hunter, his brother, and a song about being thankful for his friends, and his friend was me. Uh, he was happy that day, and the best part of his day was when mom told me she was proud of me. What we say to our kids, the time we spend with them, it matters. And for Jake and I, we wanted to be more intentional with that because this year probably for a kid is scary, but there's still something to be grateful for. So Jake and I partnered with Kessid to give every kid um, that's here today, fifth grade and under, their own journal. So if you have three kids fifth grade and under, take three. And it's a start to do something that for us has been drastically different in our lives. In fact, my husband is not that I'm, who brought me joy today, I try to get that every night. I'm like, hey, who brought you joy today, Knox? Remember those suckers I bought? <laughs> you see, I want to teach my kids that the world can't take away what it didn't give. And I don't know about you, but 2020 has not given me a lot of gratitude. <laughs> From the world, at least. Church, this is our year. This is our moment to shine. This is the year we've been prepared for. We already have everything that we need. This is a year where the world around us complains and fears for everything that's happening, where darkness implodes, but we get to light it up. We were made for a year like 2020. Have we not forgotten that no matter who fills the seat of the presidency, we already know the outcome? God already claimed the victory. And no matter what natural disaster is going to show up on the weather report or what murder hornets are going to come from wherever, God has already won. So we need to throw our shoulders back, lift up our head, and relish in the fact that we have so much to be grateful for, if not in just God alone. As the band comes forward and we listen to this song, would you allow God to give you an adjustment? Ask him to show you those moments in your life that maybe you missed out on being grateful for. Ask him to remind you of the many things you have to be grateful for and the clarity to see it as it happens. He won't just rescue you, he'll go through it with you. You guys, there was another in the fire. Let's pray. God, I just thank you. I thank you that gratitude doesn't expire, that it's never too late to learn it, and that when we align ourselves with your promises, your word, your love for us, that we have the power to impact those around us. God, I feel like you're calling us in this year to be grateful, and I pray that in 10 years from now, 20 years from now, when we think about 2020, We'll think about it was the year that gratitude was produced in our hearts. And that every year after that, no matter what, what came, we were grateful. And that we live that out. And it's because we know who you say we are. And we know that you've already won. And that we have so much to be grateful for. 
Thank you, God, that you didn't just rescue us, but that you're in it with us. Amen. Grace when the heart is under fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. And when I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning, I know I'll never be alone. There is another in the fire.
that's where you'll be I kept the joy of every fight So know that's where you'll be Come on I kept the joy of every fight Cause I know that's where you'll be I kept the joy of every battle Cause I know that's 